This video is to show you how to deal with the data for the coastal contamination exercise, the one in which we're trying to determine whether or not there's a, uh, a plume of contamination um, moving away from the mouth of the Afon Gok. Consequently, we want to compare concentrations at different distances. So we have data showing concentration in seaweed at different distances, um, and because the material that you're sampling has got natural variability. Uh, the samples are replicates. There's 10 replicates. Once you have replicates, then there's a requirement to calculate an average and to quantify the error. And you'll do that by working out the standard error of the mean. So first of all, first of all, you fill in the distances if you haven't measured those. Um, and then we want to fill in the average. The average, we're just going to use the Excel function for average equals average and then the average of these 10 replicates and enter that and then copy that down. We've got no data in that cell so we can remove that. Um, in order to work out the standard error you can use the standard error function in Excel but at this point it's better for you to work out the standard error by using the standard deviation so we'll use the Excel standard deviation function again the standard deviation of the 10 replicates enter that copy that down get rid of the one without any data in and then we can move on to the standard error in order to turn the standard deviation into a standard error we need to multiply it by the t value because the sample size is less than 30 um, so consequently we need to adjust the d value um, the d value for 95 percent confidence if you only have the, the d value for 95 percent confidence is 1.96 that's 1.96 times the standard deviation However, that only really applies if you've got an infinitely large sample size. Um, generally, you might use the D value if the sample size were much greater than 30. In this case, we've got a sample size of 10, so we need to use the T value. So in this cell up here, we can calculate the T value and then make reference to it. So the function we use is T inverse, so it's the inverse of the T distribution the arguments that are required, the probability that we're working at, we're working at 95%, which is actually 0 0.05, 5%, um, and the degrees of freedom is 10 minus 1, so 9 degrees of freedom, it's 10 replicates, and degrees of freedom is the number of replicates minus 1. So we enter that, we get a, a t value of 2.262. And then we need to refer to that cell when we work out the standard error. The standard error is equal to the standard deviation multiplied by the t value. We need to make sure that there's an absolute reference to the t value because we're going to copy it down. So we want to make sure there's a dollar sign in front of the 4. We can do that by pressing F4 and that will cycle through putting the dollar sign in different places. Or you can enter a dollar sign. And then we need to divide by the square root of the number in the sample. The number in the sample is 10. Um, square root is raising to the power of 0 0.5 or you could use the Excel function SQRT square root. We enter that. That's our standard error. Copy that down. Get rid of the one without any data. Okay. Now we're ready to draw our graph. The graph needs to show distance against concentration. So highlight the distance, then holding control, we can then also highlight the average concentration and then insert. The sort of graph we want is a scatter plot, not a line plot. A line plot is something that you'd almost never use as a scientist. A line plot that's got an x-axis that is purely labels, a meaningless x-axis. Scatter plot has real data on both the x and the y-axis. In this case, that's what you want because you're plotting concentration against distance. So 
scatter plot and we don't want to join the points together. So there's our graph. It's immediately given it a title. We don't use titles. We're going to write a figure legend underneath. So first of all get rid of the title. We don't need to have um, a label for the points either because there's only one set of points on there so we can get rid of that. Now we need to add our error bars. To add the error bars we go to the layout tab after selecting the graph, select the graph, go to the layout tab and then error bars is one of the options. None of these are going to do for us. We need to use our own data these standard errors is our own data, we need to use our own data to control the length of the error bars. So under more error bars we can choose this custom option and then we choose to specify the values and do that by clicking on there. Similarly, click on there and then highlight. Now you can see we've drawn the vertical error bars on, but by default it's also put horizontal error bars on. We need to remove those. We can actually click on them and delete. Now, though you can only see one of the error bars, the others are there, it's just they're much, much smaller, and you can see that from the data. The only thing you need to consider is that you've got one site which, owing to the conditions of the site, didn't have the, um, the correct seaweed. It was a more exposed site, more exposed to battering by the waves, and the type of seaweed that we've been using didn't grow there. So you can choose to either leave that out and you've got a missing point at um, 26 kilometers or if you want to put something in there um, the people doing the sampling collected a different sort of seaweed they collected Ascophyllum nodosum um, however the rate that accumulates metals might be different to the rate that the fucus of Siculosus has accumulated metals so they've not only collected the Ascophyllum from the missing site, site 7, but they also collected it from site 8 as well. So because at site 8 both types of seaweed have been collected, you've got the Fucus reciculosus with 3.97 uh, milligrams a gram and the Ascophyllum at 11.25. Um, and if you look at the means, the mean 3.67 the mean 11.41 and you can work out what the ratio of these two is and then you can multiply the data from site 7 with the Ascophyllum the dosum by that ratio in order to fill in a calculated concentration. Uh, if you choose to do that you need to make it clear in your method section that that's, what's, what, that's what you've done um, as long as you make it clear that's what you've done then it'd be an acceptable thing to do and that way you can fill in the gap at 26 uh, kilometers